Not every amp that comes in makes it onto the channel. Yesterday morning, a local musician, friend of mine, great player, great, great songwriter especially, came by because he was on his way to do some sessions. And his main amp for the session work, a 64 Princeton, had just stopped working. Uh, blue fuses, no light, et cetera, et cetera, no sound. So I said, bring it on in. Let's see what's going on with that thing. I, I know my buddy Rob Hull had done most of the work on that before. Couldn't be much wrong with it. So some basic troubleshooting. Took about 20 minutes. Bad rectifier tube. Put a new rectifier tube in. Put a new fuse in. Made sure it was working. And off he went to a session. So he was very happy. And I try to do that stuff for the local players as much as possible. But, you know, due to time constraints, you're not going to get a video on that kind of thing. But this amp came in today. Uh, another local musician, really nice guy, called this morning and said that his main gigging amp, this Deluxe Reverb, the light's not coming on. But the little red light in the back keeps blinking. Little red light in the back? That's right. It's a Tone Master. And this Tone Master is about three years old, which means this Tone Master is out of warranty. Let's see if we can get this thing up and running for him again. Taking these apart is just about the same as taking apart one of the uh, standard tube versions. Let's talk about this right here. People online often say this is a 100 watt amp. No, it's limited to the relative output of an actual 22 watt deluxe reverb. Now on a deluxe reverb, that 22 watts is measured clean. The amp actually puts out 30 to 35 watts when you push it hard, but at clean, it's 22 watts. And this has been limited. How do I know that? Well, first of all, it ships with either the Neo 12K or the Neo Creamback speaker, and the Neo Creamback speaker, at least, is only rated for 65 watts, and they're not going to ship a 100-watt amp with a 65-watt speaker in it. They'd just be killing speakers all the time. Fender doesn't like to do that. On the other end of things, you'll see this ICE power module in here. And this particular power module is capable of putting out 200 watts, but they're not putting out 200 watts. Something in the rest of the circuit is limiting the power being sent to this. It's probably the same power module used for the twin version and the basement version and the super re reverb version, anything else they have. And the deluxe reverb version, it's only being fed enough signal to put out equivalent of a 22 watt tube amp. And no, there is no difference between a tube watt and a solid state or digital watt. Watts is watts, people. In addition to the power module down there, here's the big CPU brain of this thing. And here are some other controller stuff, other functions, switching functions, all digital. And then the uh, front board has the input jacks and just a whole bunch of linear small value pots that tell all the chips what to do. Now, I just took this thing outside and in the nicer light outside where I could really see things even better than here on the bench, I looked through the entire amp to see if there's any component that was dark or discolored or burnt or anything. Sometimes these things have obvious telltale signs. I've not seen anything. Then I did some research and apparently no power and a flashing red LED down there for the software update function is a pretty common failure mode on these. And uh, most people have found that when they contact Fender, it is a bad diode, quote, in the power supply, quote, which would indicate a diode is bad on this ICE module. And so I looked again throughout the entire ICE module at everything that's visible and nothing stood out. The trouble is this is a double-sided board and there are more diodes on the bottom. So before I open this thing up and put any labor into it, I've reached out to a local Fender authorized service center to see if this thing would be honored, even though it's out of, outside of warranty, if they do the repair at no charge to the owner, or if they cannot do that, share the service bulletin, or at least tell me which diode needs to be changed. So I don't have to spend two hours tracing the circuit to find the mystery diode. Now it's possible I'll take this board out. On the other side, there's gonna be one that's obviously smoked. I don't know that yet, but it's also possible that the diode is bad and there's no visible sign of it. It could be this, uh, this is labeled as a diode on the board, but it looks to be a, uh, a rectifier or some kind of voltage converter. I don't know uh, because it's all gooped. It does say D something on this. So maybe that's what they're changing. People think it's a diode. So I don't want to start swapping out little things, hoping for a fix. I'm going to see if the authorized service center will fix this or tell me specifically what to fix if, if necessary, 
or failing that, I can get an entire new ICE module for this thing for about 150 bucks with shipping. So either way, this guy will have a working app again soon. I just don't know what it's going to take to get there. So hopefully I hear back from that guy this afternoon with some good news for the owner of this app. And I'll report back in the next video on this. Either way it goes. Thanks for watching.